Hello again, you two. How are you? Uh, it's very sunny today in Montreal, and I'm wearing my yellow shirt because it's sunny. So it's the perfect time to talk about 10 improvements I've made to this uh, solar telescope setup of mine over the last two years. The last video was in 2017. And so uh, I've made a few improvements to make it easier to use as well as e uh, faster to start up and more flexible. So let's start. I have my list of 10 items, just like David Letterman. So let's uh, go ahead. Number 10, I decided to go all camera based. That is not visual anymore. So I'm going all uh, with electronic cameras to observe the sun in the three wavelengths uh, of this telescope. Um, and what I've done is I've, I'm using, uh, for hydrogen alpha, I'm using the ASI 1600mm uh, uh, from ZWO. It's a 16 megapixel camera. And on the calcium K as, w uh, calcium K as well as uh, visual, I'm using same cameras here, a ZWO ASI 183mm. Um, these cameras, uh, the, the latter has uh, 20 megapixels. So these cameras have enough pixels so I can zoom in uh, electronically uh, without losing too much of the uh, resolution. Really, it's within what the telescope can provide uh, for resolution. And, and, and so I don't have to switch lenses or bar lows anymore. <clears throat> I found the right uh, combination of focal reducers uh, with these cameras to, have, to maximize the size of the sun uh, in the field of view. So that's a big improvement and you'll see uh, when I go to the other side of this wall because I observe from the other side of this wall usually on, uh, on uh, a video screen. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll, uh, number nine, I have a new laptop. It's an MSI laptop. Uh, you need uh, quite a fast laptop to be able to deal with these cameras which generate uh, tens of megapixels, 16-bit um, per second uh, images. So you need to have a very fast laptop. This is an MSI GT83UR. It has two graphic cards. Um, and on the other side, coupled with that, because this works as a regular laptop when I raise the, uh, the screen, but on the other side of the wall, I have a 50-inch uh, 4K monitor with uh, keyboard and a mouse. So uh, you'll see how I start the setup, but this is the, an improvement as well. The monitor is an improvement over the last two years. Uh, number eight is a motorized focus. I've decided to go motorized because I wanted to be able to um, control the system from the other side. So what I've done is I found the right combination of simple motorized focus. What I did is I looked for 12 volt uh, motors that you can adapt to these telescopes. Um, and the, the easiest way I found is to find a right angle a motor with a gearbox, a worm drive with a right angle. And so it's a 12 volt motor, very small, but because it goes through a worm gear, uh, this increases the torque on the output. And uh, with about 100 milliamp of current, I can drive the focus on any of these three telescopes. So I have uh, one uh, motorized focus here, one here, as well as one here. I have a focus as well, or a, a motor as well, to control the hydrogen alpha etalon in the front. A more detailed view of the one of the focusers. So it's a simple uh, 12 volt or 9 volt uh, motor DC, and you can see the wires going out here and then to the controller. And this is the worm drive. So this is what takes the torque from the motor, uh, turns it 90 degrees, increases the torque because it's a high ratio. These are like 0.6 RPM motors coming out at the output. There's then a flexible coupling that you order uh, with this diameter on the motor output and it might be a different diameter on the focuser, on the telescope focuser, but that works very well. This allows a little bit of a misalignment between 
what the motor drives, the shaft that the motor drives, and then the shaft of the focuser. All this is held by uh, simple pieces of wood that I've uh, made V-grooves on because the motor is, uh, is cylindrical and so is the telescope. So it's a piece of wood with two V-grooves on, e uh, on each side and it's held by, by a, a regular uh, clamp. So very simple motor uh, in uh, this little gearbox is about $10 and uh, I believe it comes from overseas. Uh, very cheap, so I have uh, three of them. Here's the second one, and here's the third one. Number seven, to control all of this, um, I need a flexible uh, system to operate all these motors on 12 volts on this side of the wall or on the other side of the wall. So I recycled or I reused a bunch of uh, audio parts that I had in the house. I didn't buy anything new. Um, so I've made this little uh, steampunk contraption. And what it does, it takes a motofocus from GMI that I had from 20 years ago and it uses it with uh, five different uh, outputs. So you send 12 volts to this box and you flip it with the uh, the buttons here on GMI and you send it to different motors and the motors are selected via this audio switcher because it's 100 milliamps it works very well. So all of this is connected through an RJ45 you know Ethernet cable. So I can connect it directly to the mount. I can connect it uh, on the other side of the wall through an extension and I can connect it also outside when the mount is is uh, set up outside so very versatile no new uh, equipment to buy fun to look at and uh, it works fine it works the first time so it works since then all right that was number seven Number six, a temporary pillar for working this outside. Um, you see that the setup is now done in my bedroom. It's the regular setup, but on special occasions, I might want to take it this outside. So I've made a pillar that I can attach to the, uh, to the to railings on the, on the balcony um, temporarily, just for maybe an hour. Uh, so what I did here is I um, I took PVC pipe and an extension tube for this uh, Sphinx mount and I've uh, put them together and because it has the same oops because it has the same interface uh, in the end it works fine with this uh, mount and with the elastic bands I can just wrap this uh, against the railing and yeah it flexes a little bit in this in, in this and the wind but um, it's really uh, minor uh, compared with uh, not being able to take or taking this out with a tripod and having to redo the tripod adjustments for inside the, the bedroom when I do my regular observing that was a big uh, flexibility improvement also when uh, this is outside. Um, I can plug my uh, steampunk uh, remote controller from anywhere outside, inside, on the other side of the wall to control all this stuff. Also, number five, I decided to wrap all the cables in this um, sleeve. It's a white sleeve and um, so it allowed me to hide all the cables into one uh, bigger white cable and that was acceptable uh, to my girlfriend because we're in the bedroom I didn't want all kinds of black cables running everywhere so passed the test number four new white light setup um, this was hard to do um, this it's this telescope white light setup is to see um, the 
the sunspots as clearly as possible. And um, after a few tries, what I did is, well, I went with a, um, a solar wedge from Lunt, um, Herschel wedge from Lunt. But I bought it from Europe because the Herschel wedges, this is a one and a, half, a one and a quarter size wedge. Those that come from Lunt, uh, usually North America, have a, um, a, a filter in them and I wanted that removed. So I, I, it turned out that in Germany, um, they sell the Lunt wedge without the filter. So I ordered, I ordered from them. And then the filter I choose after testing the bad uh, continuum at 540 nanometers, I tested the Edmund uh, filter at 514 nanometers, one nanometer bandwidth. And that wasn't that good. So I'd like to thank uh, Christian Villadrich for his guidance. Um, and he recommended an Andover G-band filter. Andover is in the States. Uh, it's 438 decimal 72 nanometers at 2 nanometer uh, bandwidth. And that works very well with this setup. And it's it's uh, very fast imaging. It's in the one five thousandth of a second. Uh, imaging, so it's, it, it goes very well. Number six, I bought larger uh, tube ring rings for these two telescopes here. Uh, before the tube rings were these, four inch adapted to the size of the tube, I bought six inch uh, tubes and uh, what I did is I added, uh, I pierced them in three places and added long thumb screws with um, a Delrin tips. And what this allowed me to do is I, um, I set up the whole system using the hydrogen alpha telescope and then um, I can adjust precisely the uh, calcium K telescope and the white light telescope so that they're also centered at the same time. So when I'm imaging with hydrogen alpha, these two are also centered. And as soon as I start the cameras, they're in the center of the field of view. Uh, so that's a very, uh, that adds a lot of flexibility, and I don't have to move the, the tripod mount at, at all to, to find the three field of views. All right, number two, I bought a second uh, Etalon, Fabripero Etalon. Uh, this is a used Etalon 90 millimeter hydrogen alpha. To double stack uh, with the one I already have at the end of the center telescope. Uh, this is work in progress. I'm having a bit of a problem finding uh, the best combination and, and I'm not sure it's required with electronic cameras but we'll see. I'm still testing with this guy. A bit heavy as well. Uh, last and not least, number one, uh, more recently, a few months ago, I purchased the UTEC Inode uh, solar guider. That is a bit expensive, but thanks to uh, Raymond Lalonde, I have got a good deal, and uh, so I purchased his uh, used guider, and uh, it works very well. I'll demo you uh, how this works uh, in a few minutes. So that's about it. So um, ten items that make this system really easy to use. So I'll demo now, one more thing, I'll demo uh, how long it takes for me to start a session. I usually do that when I arrive from work. And so look at this. All right, let's say start the session, I will open the door and start the telescope and so on. is open. I start the telescope with a switch. I remove the caps. I do a course align by just moving the system. the mount so it's 
now the mount is now rotating at the proper uh, speed. I open the laptop. The PC is already started on the other side. I start one of the cameras. Was the ASI 1600, that's the one from the center telescope. I make sure that I am not too far away from the sun. I do a manual move. Can you see that? See, the sun is right here in the corner. good so we're going to go on the other side all right so here I am on the other side of the wall and I'm in front of my monitor here with the uh, the first camera open uh, it's the hydrogen alpha uh, camera and that's what the, it looks like it's a little bit saturated so I'll adjust it for for uh, this camera for the iPad camera Whoop! Oh, a plane just went by did you see that just in front of the Sun all right I'll lower the exposure a little bit so you can see hydrogen alpha, and then I can start other cameras. Calcium K, let's start the calcium K camera. The sun is uh, relatively low when I started to shoot the video, so it's a little bit more difficult to get calcium K. Still, there it is, calcium K. So I'll close the, open the window that's closer to the size of the sun. I'll send it to the corner. I'll start another camera quickly. This is, this will be white light. There it is, the sun. So, I'll close a window, a tighter window, like this, send this to the bottom. And adjust the other window as well. So there you go. Um, this looks saturated here, but not in my view. This is the, uh, I guess, way the iPad is filming this. Let me correct it. All right. And my, uh, with my trusty, uh, another plane just went by um, in front of the sun. This is my trusty a steampunk uh, controller. I can control hydrogen alpha uh, adjustment, tilt of the filter here. I can adjust the focus of the hydrogen alpha telescope. I can adjust the focus of the calcium K telescope. And I can adjust the focus of uh, the white light telescope. So this is how I observe the sun now. Um, it's a new way of doing it. It's all electronic, but it's very versatile. I don't need to play with lenses anymore and uh, it's really, really uh, reliable. It starts within a couple of minutes, really, um, and I'm quite satisfied with it. With the setup that I have, I have to look through this patio door, as I showed you, so I'm limited in resolution here, and the camera setup is just fine with, uh, uh, with the telescope and the uh, amount of turbulence I get being on the 12th floor of a, of a condo building. So I hope that you liked it. And uh, I sure enjoy the setup uh, many, many days a year, uh, all throughout summer for about four or five months. Uh, it takes me two or three minutes to set up. So it's, it's a great addition and uh, I'm very happy with that. All right, thank you, have a good night.